As I sat down to write the script for this video, there was a sense of unease that set in, piling on a bunch of worries and stress. Where do I begin? How do I begin? Should I research the topic more? What's something new I have to say about this topic? What can be a valuable takeaway that I can give you, the viewer? All of this was even before the first mark was made on the paper. Just then, a timely ding arrived on my phone, rescuing me away from the stress and anxiety that was brought up by the uncertainty of the overbearing blank paper. The notification appeared as a savior opening a new door, calling my attention away from the difficult task at hand. So I picked up the phone, thinking just a big work hurt. Fast forward the clock through some more doom scrolling, avoidance and procrastination. I'm at a worse place than I was when I sat down to write. This is an experience familiar to almost all of us. It is with tremendous amount of difficulty and willpower that we can direct our attention and focus to things that need to be done, whether it is studying for school or reaching a target at work. Now, with so much variety and choice for our preferred mode of distraction, we could still be procrastinating while watching or reading up on content related to the work we need to be doing without actually doing the work we need to be doing. This almost makes it seem productive and worthwhile to be distracted by a phone screen than to focus on the task we ought to be doing. But we all know from experience that the feel-good factor from this is short-lived. Time always catches up with us and we have to rush our tasks to the finish, adding on more stress to our lives and even worse, leaving us disappointed with our own selves. We hear everywhere that the secret source to improving our productivity is disciplined attention and consistent focus. Yet, why is it so difficult to implement this in action? To live with discipline and focus in our lives without it feeling like a chore we are forced to endure. So, how do we solve this? Defining focus Focus is the act of filtering down our whole to-do lists, goals, aspirations and ambitions to that one singular thing you are trying to achieve in the present moment. Most of us lack the singular focus when we sit down to do a task and get pulled in all different directions by the rest of the things to be done. Though this may give us the feeling that we were up to a lot in our day, Approaching our day this way just has us jumping around and managing various different things while barely making headway in any particularly serious task that requires our prolonged attention and focus. A famous advice Warren Buffett gave his private jet pilot. Buffett asked his pilot to write down his list of priorities in life. In the list of 25, he asked his pilot to pick out the top five most important goals. Buffett's advice to the pilot was to focus solely on just the top five and to throw away the rest 20, as they are just distractions that take away the pilot's time and energy from the top priorities in life. So the recipe for figuring out how to bring focus in our lives involves us doing our own eternal audit of our list of priorities. To pick out the distractions in the list disguised as priorities, so that we can focus clearly on what really matters. Setting our priorities straight defines the target we aim at. And this gives us the focus we need to do the things we need to do. Practicing attention. If focus is defining the bull's eye we take aim at, attention is the skill of archery that equips you with the necessary capabilities to reach your goals. So like any worthwhile skill, Attention is something you develop with practice and patience. Hindu monk and public speaker Dan Dapani said this in his popular TEDx talk. People are good at distraction because it's what they practice. Why are people not good at concentration? Because they are never taught it and they never practice it. Attention is a manifestation of the mind. And a sound mind requires a healthy body. Eat healthy. Sleep well. Exercise. This holy trifecta of physical well-being impacts all aspects of life, and it's no surprise that they play a role in our ability to direct our focus and improve our attention. With this solid base in place, we can work on the challenge of owning our attention span. Writer Nir Eyal, in his book Indestructible, 
identified that the causes for distractions can be categorized into two types. Number one, proximate causes, those immediately responsible for the problem at hand. For example, a text notification diverting your attention from the exam you are preparing for. Number two, root causes, those which make up the underlying psychological reasons why we are easily distracted and find it hard to pay attention. These causes are usually modeled to relieve the discomfort we feel while working on a difficult task. There's a temporary satisfaction we get in taking our eyes off our textbook and check that text message from a friend. So, to learn to handle our distractions, we must learn to handle our discomfort. To practice holding our attention without getting distracted, Nir Ayal urges us to really pay attention and be mindful of those moments when our attention is getting distracted. By noticing the discomfort that precedes the distraction and identifying the emotional and thought-based triggers for our distraction, we are able to better understand the psychological hurdles we are working to overcome, while trying to improve our attention span. As the saying goes, understanding the problem is half the solution. Now, how do we bring about a change? How do we make ourselves more attentive in our difficult tasks? Turns out, the secret to this is to approach our root causes of distraction with compassion and curiosity instead of contempt. Self-compassion makes us less likely to deviate from our tasks. Being strict, reprimanding and shaming ourselves only increases our own desire to be pulled away by our distractions. It is also essential to understand that the obstacles we face are the path to success and not a sign of defeat. It is also possible to reimagine any task at hand to be fun. By gamifying and reframing any work we are assigned, we can turn it into something more like play instead of a chore. This doesn't necessarily mean giving yourself treats at every five-minute interval in the task, but rather focusing more intently on the task while looking for variability within it requires reframing how we perceive the whole task at hand itself. For example, I found it helpful to reframe the task of writing the script for this YouTube video into me just having a casual email discourse with a friend interested in this topic. And the one last ingredient to improving our attention is to know that we can improve. If we believe we are a person of low self-control, we'll behave in ways that show low self-control. Becoming better requires restructuring our temperament to come out of learned helplessness and take baby steps towards changing one's own identity for the better. And knowing we can do it, knowing it is possible. So he begins the journey into a more compassionate and playful outlook to build more focus and attention in our lives.